These are 5 most common mistakes that people are making when using use effect hook. Use effect hook is the most complicated hook inside React. This is why there are so many questions and actually wrong answers on the internet all over Google. This is why I want to show you most common mistakes and how you can avoid them. The most common mistake that people are doing is an infinite loop. As you can see here we have an app component and here we have a state for our array with setter. And also I added here use effect. And inside we are setting our array just with some value. And actually this code looks super basic, but it will cause infinite loop. Why is that? You need to remember that use effect is triggered after every rendering of our component. Which means first time we render this div app and after this we are executing use effect. So we are setting here our array with one inside. The first problem here that this setter will cause the re render of the component, which means we are starting all over again and here our use effect will happen again after second render, which actually means use effect triggered the setter, setter triggered re rendering and then we have use effect again and again setter. This is why it is causing infinite loop. And actually the easiest fix that people want to do here is to write dependency array. And just to remind you, dependency array inside use effect allow you to set the dependencies, which means we will do something inside use effect only when our dependencies are changing. This is why here we can pass an array and here set our dependencies. And in our case it will be our property array. In this case if our array didn't change, then we won't call use effect and everything will work fine. But actually it won't, it will still be an infinite loop. Why is that? Because actually here inside dependencies we can provide only primitives. We can't provide here arrays or objects. And this is working like so because React is using standard JavaScript comparison. And in JavaScript you can't compare objects or arrays. As you can see in this example here we are comparing two objects and they are false because you can't compare them. And React inside is using the same comparison, this is why our dependency won't work. This array that we are comparing here will never equal our array inside the state. This is why actually the fix here is to change your architecture. If you are writing code like this, which means you are going in the wrong direction. But actually if you have some rare case where you need deep comparison, there are some custom hooks for that. As you can see here you can just google deep comparison hook and take the most popular. They are working all in the same way, they just do a deep comparison. But you need to remember that this is not a fast operation. One more problem that I see really often, that people are writing too complicated code. As you can see here we have our app component and here three states, for is loading, for error and for to do's. So it is looking fine and here we have our fetch to do's method where we simply set loading, then we are calling an API and on success we are setting to do's and on error we are setting our error. Then we have a use effect to trigger this fetch to do's on initialize. This is all completely fine. What is not fine is the second use effect. As you can see here we have a use effect where inside dependency we have an error. Which means we are waiting for our error and inside we are checking ok if we have an error then we need to make push to home page. Actually this code is completely valid and you can write like this, but you can make it easier. Actually as you can see from this code we simply make one fetch to do's and nothing more. And here is our catch, which actually means we can move this code with error and history push inside our catch and this is it. You don't need to overcomplicate your code by creating one more use effect just to handle it kind of in React hooks way. So we can just put here brackets, then call inside our set error and after this we can make our history push. So I will copy it and put here and now we can safely remove our use effect. And this code will work exactly in the same way. The next problem that is happening quite often is that people don't clean their API request. Why it is important? Just imagine that you have a component where you fetch some data on initialize. So actually we are jumping to the page and initializing this component and our fetch is starting. 
Then let's say that we are jumping to another page and we still didn't get the result from our request. And actually our previous component is already destroyed by React, but API request will come later. And actually it will try to execute the set of the component which doesn't exist anymore. And you will get such error. So actually this error is happening because you are trying to set something in the state of the component which was already destroyed. As you can see here we have a call API and here inside then or catch, doesn't matter, we have a set to do's or set error. Actually we are setting here a state. And this code will break if our request is still there but the component is already destroyed. And there are several ways to fix this problem but actually they are all doing the same. We want to prevent setting inside our state if our component is already destroyed. Actually here inside our use effect we can return a function. And this function will be executed after our component will be destroyed. Which actually means we can create some flag to know that our component is already destroyed. To make our code simpler I will just take the whole content of our fetch to do's and call it directly inside use effect and remove fetch to do's function. So now we are doing everything inside our use effect and here is our return. Now on the beginning of use effect I want to create a new property with let because we want to override it later. And here I want to name it skip get response after destroy. What does it mean? This is our flag which is checking if our component was already destroyed. And as you can see by default it is false and now here inside our return we can set it to true. Which means here we know our component was destroyed. Now the only thing that we need to do is wrap all our setters here inside with this if not and here is skip get response after destroy so we want to skip this code if our component was already destroyed and inside we are calling our setter and we are doing exactly the same here inside catch so if we want to skip it then this is fine in other case we want to call our setter and this is how our code is looking like not really beautiful but it does the work done because now we won't call the setters after our component was destroyed and actually if you are using some library like Axios for example you can cancel your request. Which actually means your success will never come if you will cancel your request. And you are doing exactly the same stuff here inside return, you are simply cancelling your request. So these were most common mistakes in use effect hook. And if you are interested in more react hooks mistakes then check this video also.